Hello guys, welcome to another episode of mountain bike rear suspension. Today we are going to learn a bit more about the unsprung weight and what is the influence on the suspension performance. And you are going to learn uh, that the lighter the unsprung weight, the better the wheel tracks the ground. And for that I'm going to use some dynamic simulations. So I hope you like this video. So, for those who don't know, the angsprung weight is basically the non-suspended mass of the rear suspension. So, we are talking about the wheels and the tires, the cassette, the brakes, the rear triangle, and that's the moving part of the suspension. So, it's the unsprung weight. Regarding the front suspension, the unsprung weight is the front wheel, the disc and the brakes, and the lower legs. I actually measured the unsprung weight of my bike some years ago in episode 9. It was just like 5 kilograms. But for most modern enduro bikes and lighter bikes, you should get approximately uh, 4 kilograms of unsprung weight. Regarding the sprung weight, it's basically the remaining weight of the system. So it's you, your, your body weight and the mainframe weight. So for an average guy, probably this uh, suspended mass, this sprung weight, is just about 90 to 100 kilograms, depending on the rider's weight, obviously. But all of this weight does not go to the rear suspension. So assuming a 60% distribution, you will in end up with a 60 kilograms of suspended weight on top of the rear suspension only. Now that you understand the concepts of unsprung and sprung mass, we can just do the ratio between both and the ratio is what matters. So in this case you get a ratio of 7%. Using the same example but uh, removing the, the rear cassette, okay, using a gearbox for instance, you can save 500 grams on the unsprung mass, this is one pound, and you basically decrease the ratio from 7 to 6%. So it's a difference of only uh, 1%. Now let's start with the fun part of this video, okay? I'm going to show you some dynamic simulations uh, of a suspended mass and we can play with the weights of the unsprung weight for instance and see what is the impact of that. So I'm going to use a very simple system and this makes very easy to see the difference. So it's a suspended mass on top of a spring and then you get the unsprung weight, the wheel, in contact with the ground. The ground moves up and down uh, very fast and you can change the speed of the movement. So basically we are simulating bumps. So in our first simulation we are going to compare the extremes. We are going to compare a normal unsprung weight, 4 kilograms, against a very unrealistic value of 60 kilograms. That will be something like a tractor wheel on your bike. So I'm going to start to simulate the bumps. Here you have it. As you can see, on the right side, with a heavy unsprung weight, the wheel does not track the ground so well. So it spends a lot of time in the air between the bump crests. I'm going to repeat in four times slower motion. As you can see, with a very heavy unsprung mass, the wheel does not keep the contact with the ground. Okay, so when the wheel hits the bump, it moves up, but it continues to move up even after uh, the bump crest. This happens because since the wheel is so heavy and due to the inertia, uh, the wheel does not shift direction uh, very easily. So when it starts to move up, it continues uh, to move up and it's very hard to slow down and to reverse the movement and to start moving down. Now again the same simulation but with a more realistic unsprung masses. So we are going to compare a 4 kilograms with a 6 
uh, kilograms. So this is a real-time speed and we cannot see a big difference comparing 4 kilograms versus 6. I'm going to repeat in slow motion, 10 times slower motion, okay, so very slow motion, and we cannot observe any significant difference in this scenario. However, I'm going to show you a very interesting thing. I'm going to speed up the crankshaft movement in order to get uh, a higher frequency uh, bumps and you will see that there is a difference. I'm going to double up this, this frequency and now we have 4 bumps per second, higher frequency, okay? This will mimic, for instance, going very fast over a rocky section, for instance. I'm going to press the play, one, two, three. It's very hard to see because it's very fast, but we can now see some difference. I'm going to play again the simulation, but at a slower motion, four times slower motion. And as you can see, we can now see a difference between the four and the six kilogram unsprung mass. Okay, the four kilogram one performs better than the six kilogram one at high frequency bumps. This is very cool. And now I'm going to repeat again the same, but now using one kilogram unsprung weight. This is very unrealistic and very light, obviously, but just for the sake of, of the simulation. This is real-time speed, hard to see the difference. Now with slow motion, four times slow motion. Okay, as you can see, the one kilogram wheel tracks much better the ground. Okay, so to provide a better visual of what we saw until now, I did this gross animation, it's not realistic, but with a light and sprung mass, the wheel can track the bump up and down, okay? Now, with a heavy and sprung mass, a heavy wheel, the wheel does not track the ground so well. Okay, so when the wheel hits the bump, it continues to move up after passing over the bump crest. So comparing the both trajectories, you can see that with the lighter wheel, uh, it remains more time in contact with the ground, so it provides more traction. Moreover, and this is very interesting, the same also happens in the down movement over, for instance, a hole or a depression or a step down, for instance. And this can be a bit counterintuitive, but the lighter the unsprung mass, the faster the wheel goes down uh, and contacts with the ground. And I'm going to simulate this step down scenario. So basically, the simulation is on pause right now. I will remove the ground and then I will hit the play button to see which is the wheel that moves down faster. Okay, so I just removed the ground and I'm going to press the play button. Are you ready? One, two, three. As you can see, the lighter wheel moves down faster than the heavier wheel. Okay, the suspension can push down the, the wheel faster. I'm going to repeat again in slow motion. Okay, as you can see, the lighter wheel moves down faster and after the suspension fully extends, both wheels move at the same velocity. This is very cool. Now you are probably thinking, okay, Andre, that makes sense, but if I increase my rebound speed, I also get the same effect. And uh, yeah, you are actually right. If you increase the rebound speed, the wheel moves down faster and it remains more time in contact 
with the ground but as I showed you in one of my previous videos a very good video in my opinion uh, increasing the rebound speed makes the sprung mass very unstable so basically you and the bike will bounce a lot and you get a very bouncy uh, riding and very unstable riding okay so to conclude in this video we learned that a light and sprung weight is good since it provides more uh, contact between the tires and the ground okay the wheel gets more planted over the bumps and this is especially true over high frequency bumps okay guys that's it for today i hope you like this video please subscribe the, the video and give a like and so on and don't forget to visit my website so stay tuned and see you next time bye